Black Key Mel, an American national, but not a citizen of the United States. Peace, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the More Empire Building Show with your host, Akeem L. here on Hindsight Radio, the information station changing the nation. Hope everybody's doing well. Um, everything with me is doing great, uh, as always. Um, pretty much all this week, just been reading different books, going through different things. Um, actually, we're going to talk about a little bit uh, treatise on equity pleading and practice. It's an ancient book, and it, u- it uses uh, ancient words or old words that they don't use in court today. And some of the terms you should be using in court because it's going to bring you back to your proper status and uh, proper position in court. Because the terms that they're using now are basically U.S. citizen terms. Not only when they call you a person, individual, things like that, makes you a a U.S. citizen, but the terms you use in court makes you a U.S. citizen. So you need to go back and find those ancient words, those old words that they were using in the courts so that you can go back to common law and get away from uh, these statutes that they created for their citizens, their subjects. If you uh, caught the show on Tuesday, I read the New Hampshire Constitution, a little bit of it. I didn't read the whole thing. And and in parts of that Constitution, it was calling people subjects, you know. And then parts of it was calling people the people, you know, showing that there was two classes of people. But that's what I'm going to talk about. But first, before I do that, uh, Las Vegas is October the 5th, uh, which is uh, not this coming Saturday, but the Saturday after this. Uh, So if you're looking to secure a spot, go online to com, click the events tab. The information is there. there. It's only $200 to attend. Uh, To get the information that you're going to get there, that's a cheap price. At one time, it was $300. 350 at sometimes, depending on the cost. But my expenses is not what they used to be, so I could cut the price down a little bit. And plus, I had uh, help getting the venue. A few brothers over there in Las Vegas. Well, Las Vegas found the venue and they chipped in their money to uh, get the venue and uh, the hotel. So, thank you for them, to those brothers out there that did that. Um, to make it possible for you guys to have a seminar in that area. You know, the flights from this side of the country over there tend to be very expensive, no matter how soon you buy them, how early you buy them. It's expensive. Oh, so that really is what drives the cost up for seminars, those flights. And then, uh, then you got the venue that you got to get in the hotel stays. And, and if there's an, uh, some type of special occasion there, you know, they're hosting some big event, that drives the cost up of everything, which Las Vegas is like a big place that people like to hold their events. When I used to, when I was vendoring for Direct T V, that was one of their biggest places that they would hold their events for the year was in Las Vegas. So um that's what drives up the cost. But Fortunate, you guys, only $200. That's all it takes to get there to learn about your nationality, correcting your status. Uh, if you were listening to that song by The Temptations, Ball of Confusion, he said he made an interesting comment in there. Or, or, uh, there was an interesting verse. It says, the only safe place to be is on an Indian reservation, <laughs> which I thought, thought was interesting. You know, when we talk about nationality, who you really are, Basically, what they're saying is the only safe place to be is to correct your nationality. They knew that back then. I'm not sure if that was their intention when they said that, but that was an interesting comment to say, showing that they had certain rights that everyone else didn't have. U.S. citizens didn't have that. Blacks, 
whites, whatever. They didn't have that, those rights. And I was actually watching a movie, I think it was about two weeks ago, about a, a, a guy, um, a brother went out to work on an Indian reservation to teach and uh, how they had their own school and uh, they had their own land. There was separate government. Uh, by themselves, of course, those particular Indians, you know, the people were pretty much didn't have a lot of money or poor because the, the, the government shut them out, didn't fulfill their end of the bargain when it comes to the treaties that they uh, made with these people. And, of course, people didn't know how to enforce their, their rights when it comes to these treaties. So, but that was interesting that the song actually said that. And if you've been studying your nationality for a while, you know that, and you did it, it's, it's, it's helped you in some areas. Even with getting pulled over, people are giving, giving out their passport card instead of the driver's license, and the police are just telling them to have a nice day. Leave them alone. So it's time to start taking it serious because they are doing certain things to block, you know, block people. People are still getting through, but I noticed, you know, when I help people correct the SS5, then, oh, we're not taking that. We're not adding it to the record and giving people a hard time. When I did it, I had no problems. And the other people did it, they didn't have a problem. But certain individuals are running into problems. It just depends on where you go and who you're dealing with. Um, unfortunately, it's most of the time that we're getting difficulty is from people who have our same complexion which is sad. We are blocking each other. <laughs> They're not. The guy who helped me was a middle-aged white man. And he said, oh, you looked at the paper. Oh, okay, I'll take care of it. Put it in. A couple weeks later, I got the new car. No problem. See, other people don't have a problem with us claiming our nationality. But if for some reason our own people have a problem with us not calling ourselves black african American. Negro, they have an issue with that. How dare you not want to be one of us? And they don't even know what one of us is. They don't really understand those terms. But they will fight to the death for that, for those beliefs. We have a lot of beliefs. We have a lot of beliefs when it comes to religion. We have a lot of, we follow a lot of programming when it comes to different things, religion, politics, education. And a lot of times we don't even know we're following a program. We don't even know we're following a script that our parents laid out for us. And if we look at how our parents' lives turned out, we don't even pay attention to the fact that if we follow that same path, we're going to have the same results they got. I mean, I love my people to death, but there's certain things I can't follow. Are you going to these different establishments out of habit just in case? Is it really doing something for you but making you feel good for a moment? And then you leave and you're in the same position. Because I'm from my experience, the only thing that got me any real results was my digging down, opening up a book and reading it, and applying the principles of what I read. Some of y'all got the notion that just because I go and do these certain rituals, because it is a ritual if you do it consistently, it's a ritual, that somehow you're going to be saved. No, you're not saved because you sit in the church or you go to school or you go to some political function. You're not saved because of that. That's just you participating in some event. You're saved by the changing of your mind and applying the principles that are being taught there. But some of y'all don't even know what principles you need to apply. Like, I've known people, you know, who died going to church consistently. My grandmother religiously went to church. Every week she went. And 
and the same, and, and and she couldn't see. You know, she had she was legally blind, but she took a bus from the Bronx to Manhattan because this is the church she went to all her life. And then when she ended up as an invalid in the hospital in the nursing home, none of those people came from the church to see her. And the very church, when they tried to bury her in the, you know, do the funeral at that church she went to, they wanted to charge. Now, this is a woman who worked for AT&T, and she retired, and she was still getting dividend checks from them, and so she was taking 10% of her earnings and giving it up to this church regularly. And they still wanted to charge her to have a service there, a one-hour service. It was a fee. You know, not they couldn't even gift that. But why do we do these rituals? I can tell you why, because we're programmed, we're hardwired to do them. From a ch- from infancy to follow a certain path. And this is why there's a big gap between people who have money and the people who don't have money, because people who have money don't follow the norm. Most of the people, they, it's not that they don't believe in God and believe in a higher power and spirituality. As I've met quite a few people up there, up at that top level, and they were very spiritual people. And actually, I was able to sit there and converse with them about different subjects, and we could talk about the Bible and things like that, and we could relate. It's not that they don't have anything in common with you. They do. A lot of them come from those type of backgrounds. But they learned one thing, that the formal, the this, this current structure of religion as a whole, no matter what faith you have, is designed to keep you distracted from your true divinity, your true power, because everything comes from within. You, you create your own currency. You create your peace. You create your wealth in your home. No God in the sky, no Jesus, none of them do that for you. None of them. No matter how much you say, I say thank you, Jesus, for this, that, and the other. <laughs> he's not doing it. Guess who's doing it? The people in your life. Who's paying the bill? Jesus is not paying bills. Jesus is not paying car notes. I know this might sting a few people. But we have to, I have to tell you what's real. Who is paying the bills? You all. You get up, you go to work, make the money, and pay the bills. Jesus is not going to work for you. And if, when you fall short, who pays? Who helps you pay it? Somebody, you might have to pick up the phone. Hey, can I get a few dollars until I get my next paycheck? That person becomes your Jesus. That person becomes your savior for that moment. There's a lot of Jesuses running around here. It's not the one that they're talking about in the sky. There's a lot of messiahs. There's a lot of saviors. Everybody can be a Jesus or a messiah. It's not relegated to one person. Or one entity that they talk about in the Bible. Like Reverend Ike says, if you have if you are talking about a historical Jesus, then you don't know Jesus. You don't know the Messiah. You don't know Yahshua. Because your Jesus, your Messiah, could be the very person you cuss them out for lack of appreciation of the things that they've done for you. Yep, I'm sure y'all experience this. The very people that you help are the very people that that take advantage of you. And in that case, you have been, you are living out the example that the Bible. See, all of that stuff is just satirical, metaphorical examples of what you're going to go through when you have a, a Christ-like personality. When you're out there helping people. And they don't appreciate and they dog you out or they do something 
for lack of appreciation. I try to help my friend to understand that. You're not accepting your role as Christ in that situation. When you get upset about it or you get offended. Because people normally screw the people that really help them. They really do. The people that actually physically do things for them is the people that they overlook. People who have a tendency to appreciate those that give them nothing. Why? Because they're chasing down some, uh, they want to be liked by that person or whoever that is. And so they're trying to fight for that recognition. But a person that comes and genuinely helps, they, they don't know what that is. They don't, they don't do that. And we have to be mindful. We're not looking for somebody in the sky to come for us. The Jesus you're looking for is right there in you, in the mirror. And the Jesus that you're also looking for could be laying right next to you, putting up with your garbage. <laughs> yes, there's Jesus right there. That's who you should be thanking. That's what that scripture talked about when they were talking about oh. Um, when he was, they were saying, when you fed me, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was needed clothes, you gave me a place to stay. And they said, well, when did we have to do When you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. See, that was an esoterical, metaphorical way of saying, you have to be the Messiah for people sometimes. And if you are not doing that, they don't expect anybody to do it for you. You're not reaching out. I watch people complain, nobody does this for me. But well, wait a minute, what are you doing? Because if you're doing it, you can't even know. You won't even notice what people are not doing if you're doing it. You won't even notice it. Anyway. All right. Uh, one last thing before I get into what I'm going to read here. Uh, Tonic is at my website, akeemail.com. Uh, you can go and get what you need there. Um, the Supreme Cleanse, uh, what do you got? Uh, River of Life, and there's a few others. But anyway, all right. In this in this reading, I'm going to talk about bill the bill in equity. What is a bill in equity? Oh. Um, a lot of y'all have experienced the bill in equity and don't even know it because they're not calling it a bill in equity. All right? When you get foreclosed on and that complaint, that's a bill in equity. That's what it is. They're seeking some type of uh, remedy or relief by way of either taking your property or getting the money from you. It's a bill in equity. The bill of particulars. All right. All right. Let's let's uh let me see where I want to start. I, I'm skipping around here, so I just want to read certain parts because what's happening is I see people getting different complaints. Laws against them, or uh, uh, they're getting sued, and then they're answering these suits off of some YouTube video that tells them, "Oh, tell them I'm not the I'm the living man, flesh and blood." Uh, let me. It, it, it's there's so many things that they say, but nothing ever addresses the complaint. And if you read this ancient book, it lines out that you got to address that complaint, that bill of particulars, that bill in equity, line for line. What we call affidavit of rebuttal. See, it wasn't called affidavits of rebuttals back then. See, 
Actually, affidavit of rebuttal is not even a legal term in their eyes. It's called, I said it before, uh, an affirmative defense. And in here, they call it something else. Well, let's, y'all going to find out tonight. And I really believe that you should start using some of the style in your paperwork the way this book lines out. Because we have to, all of these laws that were created, when, you know, a couple of hundred years ago, these rules for the court, two, three, four, five hundred years ago. All right, here it is. The office and nature of the bill, all causes in equity are commenced by filing a bill in equity, a.k.a. a complaint. As it is sometimes called a bill of complaint or an information. The bill in equity is somewhat analogous, analogous, analogous. Am I pronouncing that right? Hang on. I, I meant to look that up so I can pronounce it right. Let me see how that's pronounced. It's and now legis. Legis. And now analogous. Okay, that's how it's pronounced. That's what it is. Comparable in certain respects, typically in a way which makes clear the nature of things compared. Okay. All right. The bill in equity is somewhat analogous to the declaration of the law courts. It is concise logical statement of the complainant's cause of complaint in which the parties are introduced. The facts upon which the relief sort of stated and the relief desired prayed for. All of the facts which the complainant expects to prove at the hearing and upon which he rests his prayer for relief should be set out in the bill of complaint. So what is it? Bill of complaint, bill in equity. By this is not by this is not meant that the testimony of the witnesses must be fully narrated in the bill for superfluous verbiage and useless repetition will not be permitted, but that the substance of the case must be stated and sufficient of the facts set forth to give the court. In the opposite party, a full understanding as to the facts upon which complainant seeks the relief prayed for and such an extent that when the testimony is offered, there will be no surprise to the defendant, and it can be said that the bill of complaint, by its allegations, has fully apprised the court and the parties of the facts offered in proof. These facts must be stated in a lot with precision, brevity, certainty, and simplicity. So they're saying it has to be precise and simplistic. So you don't, I see some of these things. 20 pages long. These people have court cases all day long. They do not want to see a 20 page long document. And I see answers that way. They think the more little fancy words they put in there, the more it's going to get read. No, it's not. I'm just thinking about me and how I work, right? People send me stuff to read all the time. I don't want to read y'all stuff like that. I'm not here to grade papers. I'm here to give you the information. You read it. You put your stuff together. Because I don't. Nobody reads my stuff. I don't send it to nobody. Hey, check this out. No. A lot of the stuff I have on my computer, no one has ever seen. Other than the people who I've helped, you know, I've done this stuff and I sent it to them. That's it. No one has ever seen. I've been telling you, I have templates right now in in storage right now until the time is right. Nobody reads that stuff or proofreads my stuff, but somehow they work. When I do release them, they get results. Why? Because I study, put pen to paper, and then I try them. Let's see what happens. Y'all going to have to start doing that. Be responsible for yourself. All right? Uh, where was I? Precise. Equity pleadings has no doubt in these days become a science requiring some degree of technical knowledge to master it. It in its various branches 
the pleader to successfully draft a bill in equity must know the legal principles which govern his case and be able to clearly and logically state his cause of action and formulate the proper prayer for relief and also be able to follow the cause in in the chancery court. Now, you see, she says, state his cause of action. Every complaint must have a cause of action. What caused the complaint? Was it a breach of contract? Or let's just say somebody put something on your credit report, some third party. Cause of action is what? What is the cause of action? Defaming your character. You don't have a contract with a third party character, so he defamed you. He caused harm to you by your credit score being decreased. Now when you try to seek remedy or you go to, you know, get a loan or something, they denied you. You know you need to enter that in your complaint. Some of you will get more money if you would say, okay, I, oh, he put this on my credit, and this is the harm it caused. I, I couldn't get this loan. It showed the proof, showed the denial letter. I just gave you all some hits on getting some more money. Go apply for something. No one's going to get turned down because that crap's on your credit. Take that, and that's going to be your evidence to go run into court and show how they harmed you. You see, what y'all doing is y'all just saying, oh, it's on my credit report, damaging my credit score, and that's the harm. No, you need to create some counts. That's count one when you put it on your credit report. Count two is I went to go get credit, and I was denied and harmed. That's another count against them. All right? All right. All right, uh, Judge Story in his work on equity pleading says the statement of the case and prayer of the bill for relief or otherwise always were and continue to be to this date the very substance and essence of the bill. The great importance of a full logical statement of the case in the bill will be more fully appreciated from the fact that the courts have often held that upon this statement with a prayer for general relief, a decree should be entered given to the complainant such relief as he is equitably entitled to. The parties to a bill in equity are called. The person who institutes the proceedings in equity by following the bill are called complainants or plaintiffs. Those against whom the action is brought, defendants. The complainant in the bill is called orator. If a female, or oratrix. If the proceeding by information the person upon whose relation the information is filed is called relator. An information in equity, when a suit in equity is instituted on behalf of the state or the government or those who are under its immediate protection or control, as, for example, idiots or lunatics, the pleading presenting the matter of complaint is called an information and is exhibited in the name of the attorney general or the proper law officer of the state. If the suit immediately concerns the state, the bill is exhibited on the relation of the attorney general. So, say, for example, I'm suing the state. This, and I'm suing for monetary gain. Y'all really, y'all do know that criminal courts are equity courts too, right? Because why? They have a fine attached to it. They have bonds attached to those cases. So, they all, all of these courts are equity courts. Um, so you're suing the state. You have to name the attorney general in that complaint. Because why? He represents the state. He is the attorney for the state. He's the state's attorney. A lot of people are suing the state, and they just call it the state, and then they can't get dismissed. Why? You failed to name an interested party or indispensable party. I, I read that for that reason. I read that part. If the suit immediately concerns the state, the bill is exhibited on the relation of the attorney general. If not, it may be at the instance of or under the direction of a person whose name is inserted and called a relator. Information deferred from bills and equity only in form, and generally it may be said that the same rules apply. All right. 
So I'm, I'm going to skip over to uh, we're going to get to the defense. Now you, you on the defense side, there's a lot of y'all on that side of the complaint. So let's go to the answer. So let's just say you're being sued, whether it be foreclosure, uh, even in, in criminal court. <laughs> uh, like I said, they're all equity court. Uh, the answer of the defendant in general, if the bill of complaint is not demorable and cannot be met by a plea, what does demorable mean? See, this is where we you talking about ancient terms. Demorable, a pleading, petition, or the like is said to be demorable when it does not state such facts as support the claim, prayer or defense put forward. So basically, demorable. The moral will mean dismiss. It's another way of a motion to dismiss, meaning it's the the case has no merit, so it should be dismissed. It's demorable. Okay, that's the word that they're using from this book. I'm sure you've never seen this book, or this is from 1904. They they don't say those words anymore. Um. They'll say things like this case has no merit or uh, what other words? It's frivolous. But that's the word that they're using, demoral or demor, D-E-M-U-R, demor. All right. By a plea or either of these defenses has been adopted and the demora or plea has been overruled and defendant does not desire to claim any interest in the suit having a defense to the case made upon the merits. He should answer the bill. See, it says he's got to answer that bill if he's not going to enter a motion to dismiss. That's basically all of that was said to say that. The answer is the most usual defense in equity. By it, the defendant is at liberty to set up as many defenses as he pleases if they are consistent with each other, to traverse or confess and avoid. What does traverse mean? Traverse. It's not a card, neither. I know they got a card they call it traverse. The Chevy traverse. Traverse. Extend across or through. Consider or discuss the whole extent. Move back and forth to sideways. So basically, uh, to when they, they're using that word traverse, is basically to sidestep or uh, avoid the complaint. You, you know, you can give an answer in a certain way where it doesn't make you look guilty or not guilty. All right. This is the uh, traverse or confess and avoid or otherwise answer each and every allegation of the bill of complaint, setting out concisely and fully is defense to each and every claim of the complainant. This is the most common defense in equity and is the only one by which the case can be defended upon its merits by meeting all of the allegations of the bill of complaint. So you've got to meet all of them. It is said that the answer is the ordinary mode of defense in an equitable proceeding and may be put into the whole bill or to such parts thereof as are not covered by plea or demurrer. So if you don't do a motion to dismiss, you've got to answer. Since it may be embraced with more circumstances than a plea, it may be used with greater prop- propriety where a defendant is not anxious to prevent a discovery, though the plea might be a complete bar. But where by introducing additional circumstances, he has an opportunity of exhibiting his case in more favorable light, the answer is the best mode of defense. The answer is twofold in its nature and effect. In all cases where the bill seeks for general relief, the answer of necessity consists of two parts. First, the defense to the case made by the bill, and second, the answer of the interrogatories of the complainant by way of discovery. I didn't talk about interrogatories. Interrogatories is what? For a set of questions, you get them to admit or deny some fact or it gets them to uncover truths in the case or falsehoods, one or the other. All right? 
A bill may not be strictly a bill for discovery. Every bill in equity which prays for relief requires of the defendant that he shall make a full, true, direct, and perfect answer to the several allegations in the bill of complaint. See, it keeps reiterating, reinforcing that you have to make clear, precise answers to these complaints. So if you got a, a case of traffic ticket, and it says you were speeding this and that, and in, in, in your answer, you're saying, hey, I'm the living man, and oh, I got my UCC1 filed and my DBA filed, blah, 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 and you're using that just as an affidavit, and that's your rebuttal? Because that's what I've seen. I've actually seen people that put that in, and that's their, that's their rebuttal. But they never rebutted the fact that uh, I deny that I was eating. I deny that you had jurisdiction to even pull me over because you didn't have the Constitution or you didn't have a warrant as required by the Constitution. I don't see those elements in the answer. So a judge can look at those answers, and if you don't see direct rebuttals, responses to each, to the particular complaint, he could just throw everything out, no matter what you got in there. You have a certified copy of the Constitution all you want. That's why I always tell y'all to do a motion to dismiss first. Because the motion to dismiss is going to talk about jurisdiction and say how you didn't have, we don't have to talk about my answer because you didn't have a right to pull, pull me over. So you have to do a pleading or a motion to get around answering. That's what they call traversing. So you do that, and then if they push back the motion to dismiss, you go in and then you answer, but the answer has to be coherent and in line with what the complaint is saying. Meaning it has to totally rebut what that what they're saying you did. Now discovery comes after that. Once you do your rebuttal, or you do your motion to dismiss, you do discovery. Then you can. There's a lot of times what I like to do. I like to do the motion to dismiss, and then I ask for discovery so that I can do a proper answer. Sometimes you can't answer in an appropriate time, so you ask for an enlargement of time because you're still waiting on discovery. That's how, and you get permission. You don't just not do it. You get permission. You say, "Hey, I need." time, an enlargement of time because I'm waiting on discovery, haven't received it, then I'll answer. And then the court gives you a certain amount of time or extend the time and 99.9% of the time, they extend it if you do it, right? All right. Let's go over to um, another page. So now that you have rebutted their complaint, and if the other party, the other party has an option to take exception to your rebuttal, here it is. When there is an answer to a part of a bill, a plea to a part, or a demur to a part, exception cannot be taken to a plea exception except by permission of the court. But where there is an answer to a portion of the bill, a plea to a portion and the answer is insufficient. The complainant may accept to the answer, and the plea is ordered to stand for an answer. It is presumed to be sufficient and not subject to exceptions unless permission is obtained from the court. But if the plea is ordered to stand for an answer with liberty to accept or is accompanied by an answer which will enable the complainant to accept without such special leave, then upon reference, it will be ascertained whether the bill is fully answered. Hold on. It was something else I, I wanted to read first before that. Exception for... Oh, exceptions to answer. All right, let's read this. When an answer under oath is not waived by the complainant and the answer filed 
is insufficient to meet the discovery sore is or is scandalous or impertinent, the complainant may accept to the answer. This is what people are doing when they put all of that patriot stuff in their paperwork. They're putting what the court is deemed scandalous information, stuff that is not pertinent to their case. And from that point on, the court does not take you serious. It's very hard to fight a case after someone has put all that stuff in there and they try to go back and fix all of that. It's very hard. Um, It makes my job a whole lot harder. So there it is, summary uh, of what you should do. That's not all. That's just some things. I just gave you some backbone of what happens in the court. And right on time, um, my daughter's calling in. I will be right back. Oh. Side Radio. I represent it. The information station changing the nation. All right, I'm back. All right, let's get to the phone lines. Uh, once again, we got a seminar coming up in Las Vegas, Nevada uh, on October the 5th. Go to akimel.com and all of the information is there. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about, DS-11, SS-5, driver's license correction, and a host of other information. Akimel.com, click the events tab. All right, uh, let's go to the first caller, 757-274. It's long, brother. Peace to the God. Hey, peace to God. What's going on? All right, I was just tuning in. Uh, first of all, I did listen to what you were saying. What you were saying. So, so a lot of people, I'm here, I'm one of those people that, I'm trying to find the actual tools and the actual the the mindset, you know, to actually free myself. I don't know what I'm actually looking for. I'm still a student, so I'm just tuned in mm-hmm. for the most part. Um, I remember he talked to me Tuesday. I've been in the archives, um, taking notes, but I really just don't know where to jump in at. Uh, as far as national, I still haven't jumped in. I was going to ask you, what do you advise me to start from so I can get my study on and understand where do I got to go in my mind to actually find this this understanding? Um, where do I go in the archives? So, archives? Go back and listen to the archives of the shows. I mean, from the very beginning, we had a lot of shows on uh, different topics. Nationality. A remedy. Mm-hmm. Nationality, you can go back about a couple of years. You, you've been talking about that. Um, mm-hmm. I got YouTube videos on that you can watch. I don't know if you've seen those. Um, yeah, and that's my question. I do watch them. Um, like right now, as we speak, I was just on YouTube. I'm subscribed to your channel. Yes, I am subscribed. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. I can. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, what were your passport? Passport the lies and national. I watched that one recently. National, national. I came national versus state citizen. I watched that one recently. So I'm just trying to get a grip. Yeah. You know, um, I watched the other and, ones. Uh, best thing to do is read that constitution for your state mm-hmm. to understand that, because that's where a lot of your remedy is. Mm-hmm. Um. Now, I have the 1901 Virginia Constitution. I think I need an actual certified. I, I know I need the right constitution because when I did my, when I first was doing my injunction, some of the verbiage that I was looking for that y'all guys were teaching, like um, ex post facto law, it wasn't actually ruled out for in some of the constitutions I had to go dig deep for. So, I think I might need to get another constitution. You got to you got just the read one. Not them two. Mm-hmm. Some constitutions say <laughs> retrospective laws. So you got to look. Mm-hmm. They use different words for the same uh, situation. 
Okay. So I wanna I'm gonna say right now get brother, you a I'm dictionary. So that means you have to get a dictionary out when you're reading the constitution. Preferably mm-hmm. get a dictionary from like the eighteen hundreds. The newer dictionaries can kinda of mislead you. Kinda of they will. And what were you about to say? I don't want to mm-hmm. play any games with my nationality. I just want to, I really want you to just point, as a student right now, I just want you to point me where my homework needs to be right now so I can get on my homework. And the next time I come on the air, I The uh, archives, because I've done plenty of shows on nationality. Mm-hmm. The archives. Go back and listen. A lot of them are lazy, too. I've yeah. been listening today. Um, Actually, not the lie, I've been listening today. Yes. Um, which one was I just listening to? <sighs> yes. Study your I roots. Why don't you just study your family history? Where y'all come from? Right. That's yeah. another thing. I was going to ask you. Um, all right. All right. Here's my question. Um, I remember I spoke. I had asked for so much before. Um, I don't like bringing your son up, but I do talk to him a lot. I ask a lot of questions. But I asked him, um, mm-hmm. how did I get the nationality done? And he was like, my dad, I asked him, should I go to a temple, right? This was like at least a month ago when I talked to him. And he was like, well, my dad didn't go to a temple before his nationality. And I was saying, okay, so that explains that he found out everything on his own. How can his nationality, though? Right. That's the question. Right. Whoa. Right. A temple can't give you nationality. Mm-hmm. Not right, but I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. So um, uh-huh. I, I had all these thoughts of going to a temple like tomorrow. Uh, I met a few brothers. Uh, one time he came. I didn't go that week because some was saying, no, I don't need to go to the temple. And I was getting back in the archives. So I'm really doing my due diligence, brother, to find out how I can get by now. Oh, and another thing I found, um, I was in the archives. I do remember someone saying um, RV Day publication, right? And I also had met a sister um, that's in North Virginia. Her name is um, Cimarron, Cimarron Rich L. Um, I'm mm-hmm. not sure if you know her, but she's a sister. You know, I don't know those people. Mm-hmm. And I don't, so, I can't, if I don't know them, I can't endorse what they're saying. This is what mm-hmm. I tell you, because you're naming a lot of people. This is what I tell you. Nationality is not given to you. You claim, you are, you claim who you are. You have to know who you are, and you claim that, right? Um, yes. No temple can give you that. That comes from up above, or or uh, when I say up above, that comes from your consciousness. Mm-hmm. You say who you are. No one defines who you are. You have to define that. So, Bear, how are you going to define yourself? You go find your roots to your family. They might be, mm-hmm. uh, they most likely are part of the indigenous people here. So you got to find out what tribe they belong to. You claim that as your nationality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bro. Yeah, you, you kind of sounds like you just. I don't understand what what you got. You got a lot of confusion going on. You know, what do I call myself? Who do I look to to call myself? Do I go to a temple? Do I go to here? You go dig into the roots of your family, and that's how you figure out what your nationality is. But I can tell you what you're not a U.S. citizen. I can tell you that. Mhm. All right. Okay. All right, bro. All right, All right brother. I appreciate it. All right, I'm peace. gonna get my head right. All right. Peace, brother. Let's go. Thank you. All right, peace. I can tell you what you're not. I had someone call me. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm part of Christ. I'm, I'm, I'm from the kingdom of heaven. What, what should I put on my affidavit to, to describe that? I'm like, I, I can't tell you that. That's your belief system. You figure, you write that down. If that's, that's why when I start questioning people's beliefs, because if you're asking me to define your religious beliefs for you and how you should convey that on a paper, do you really have those beliefs? Is it real to you or is this something you're saying? Because I know what to put on a paper about myself and what to say. No one, I didn't consult anybody for how I was going to classify myself for my national paperwork. I woke up and I said, this is what I want to do. We have to get out of this 
this uh, mode of looking for others for answers and go within yourself and find your answers. Your answers are in you. I'm not that type of teacher that can control every aspect of this learning process. I show you information, read this, read that. When it comes to defining who you are, who you want to be, that's on you. I will not take that responsibility on. All right? And uh, you shouldn't try to put that responsibility on anybody else. All right, let's go to uh, 803-410. Peace. <clears throat> Peace, Hakeem. How you doing, man? I'm doing good. Peace. What's going on? Good, good, man. This is Shemuel. This is the cat that was at. I was at the seminar. Uh, I knew some of the same people that you knew there in Columbia. Yeah, yeah, I know who it is. I got you. Okay, yeah, man. I, um, I got you, I got you. I like uh, what you was reading. Uh, one thing that stuck out is uh, when you were saying, now this was in 1904, is that correct? Uh, this was published in 19, yeah, 1904. You know, I, I see where it started out saying that <clears throat> that your uh, answer should be simple or simplistic, and then you read a couple lines mm -hmm. down, and then it says that now, uh, even in 1904, that being able or either trying to answer has gotten technical. So even then, they were trying to <laughs> make it hard mm -hmm. for you to do what you had to do. You know, right? How polluted. Convoluted. That's what they tried to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, yep. I was, you know, something good. Let me let me go back. Uh, something uh, good that happened. I I um, actually okay. have been go reading ahead. some. I've been reading some of the uh, Torah, and I was reading Psalm eighty two, and it was talking about um, how God came down in the assembly of the gods, and it was talking mm -hmm. about how the gods are here on the earth and then how are we going to die the death of a man, right? Because mm -hmm. you don't recognize that you're a God, you're going to die the death of a man. And, you mm -hmm. know, people, you know, so now when you say something good, I'm beginning to overstand now to separate that manhood from the Godhood and begin to overstand mm -hmm. that, <clears throat> like you were talking about, this is a re in that skit. It, this is a religious deal. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so, um, but I, that was something good. I'm beginning to open my eyes. And then I was reading 102 of Psalms, and it said that my enemies have taken an oath against me, and that's definitely mm -hmm. pertinent to the day. You know? Yeah, that's the truth. Now, when you said you read that in the Torah, right? Well, I read that okay. in the Old Testament Psalms, yes. Okay, that was Psalms. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was for me. I thought you said something about the Torah. Yeah, okay, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, it was I in the Psalms. You are God, you are all sons the most high. Yes. But you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. Yep. Yes, that's what it says. That's the that's good stuff, man. <clears throat> but uh, mm -hmm. I, I didn't have much tonight. I wanted to ask you though. Um, the um, you were saying that we were supposed to get the SS eight and the SS nine, a couple documents. I hadn't gotten oh, yeah. mine. I don't know if I did. I didn't get your email address. Uh, I'm, we yeah, put I it on document base. Uh, we actually put it on document base register. Um, whenever we were there, uh, I thought that's what we were doing. She might have given, not... given it to me. I, I didn't look in my bag. I was like, yeah, I got to send y'all these forms. But, yeah, just shoot me an email, and I'll send it to you. Uh, okay, all right. Yeah, just shoot me an email, I'll send it to you. Because I, I was thinking, I, said, I got to send these forms. I said, dang, I don't have an email for the people that was there. <laughs> I might have okay. it. I just didn't. Um, if you didn't play online, like the people that paid online, I could shoot it to them. But only okay. a few people paid online versus right. who okay. So, oh, um, okay. Yeah, just shoot me an email saying you attended, and I'll send it to you. Okay, brother. Well, I um, appreciate it. Keep it up, man. You now, you, people you, that are listening, definitely helping us. Don't be sending me no email. You ain't come to that seminar, and I'm gonna verify <laughs> it with the document page. So you know, how people try to get slick. So that's right. Don't waste your time. <laughs> 
Because I ain't going to, if I ain't familiar with the email or who you are, I'm going to send them that email address and they're going to verify if you was there or not. So it can't be verified. All right. Hey, look, one last thing I'll say, man, I'm going to send you, uh, I talked to you at the, at the seminar, I'm going to send you the site where uh, they are the lowest every time on your uh, on your cars, hotels, and cruises. So I'll send that to you so you can oh, save okay. some money. Oh, okay, you talking about that. Right, okay. Yep. Yeah, send me that, man. Please. Okay, all right, man. All right, well, peace to the all guys, right, man. Brother, peace. Thanks for the peace. information. Thank you. All no, right, no problem. Bye. All right, let's go on to 203-491. Green is the key. Greetings, what's going on? Peace. Peace, brother. It's, uh, it's happening here. I got some good news. Good news? What's going on? I like good news. Yeah, I received it. Passport. Oh, man, that's great. That's great. All right. Hey. What was your name again? This is Anthony. Anthony, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah man. All right, you got it. it. You good. You just waiting on the car to come now. Yeah, yeah, I received it today. Yeah, I received it today. Okay. Uh, you got it? Yeah, right. I, I, Jeez, yeah, I, I, I like to hear that. Yeah, just wait Now just go to your certified copy. Go get your certified copy. And uh, you go to my YouTube channel. I got a detailed video on how to go get your certified copy. Okay, okay, okay. Hey, uh, I don't want to say too much because we, mm-hmm. we did that private, but I just want to, hopefully, I don't want to go overboard. When did we, uh, I'll stop you. <laughs> it does. <laughs> okay. The, the rescission part of the uh, explanatory? I, huh? Was I supposed to, on the rescission part of the explanatory? Uh-huh. What about it? Was I supposed to sign my name right next to that? No, I don't know, okay. brother. You signed it when you notarized it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I just check it. That's the only thing I want. I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's yeah, okay, it. That's brother. It. All right. Okay. Nothing more than that. All right. But how you doing? How I'm you doing? Good. good. I'm good. I'm doing great. I'm I'm wonderful. Um, <laughs> can't great, complain. Man. Doing a lot of reading. Staying to myself. Staying out of trouble. Uh, like I'm purposely sometimes people calling me. I'm not even answering the phone, man. I didn't answer. <laughs> yeah, I know you hard to get in touch with. I know. Well, that ain't that is though. People that call me, they want to complain about their life, and I don't need all that. Now, see, y'all gotta learn how to not to let people drag you down. No. First, the one thing people will drag you down with is their own problems. And see, I give people a couple times, I give them, hey, you know, you're letting that eat at you too much, and then they keep trying to make excuses why they want to stay in that place. I leave them there, and I don't answer the phone no more. I, I, <laughs> stay there. I, you want I, to stay there. I'm trying to tell you, let that go. People are going to do you dirty all the time. That's just life. Or you're going to perceive I, it as them doing you dirty. That's life. You got to accept that. That's the war. That's the Christ life consciousness. You got to accept that. That's part of you're the not gonna, You're not going to come on those and go through something. You're going to go through something. It's going to come. It's going right. to come. It's going to go. It's going to come back again. It's, it's, yeah. it's constant. You know, oh, but I did this for them. I did that. I did. Why did they? That, listen, you did it with an expectation that they were going to reward you with their gratitude. And now you're upset because they did. That's your fault. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's <your fault. laughs> I mean, that sounds hard, but it's the truth. You know, yeah. you were looking for a reward when you did that. Hey, you looking for somebody to give you some type of accolade. You yeah, know, big and got and the big boy. Got to put a shoe. If you being a man and you got children, you don't get no accolades from nobody. For the no. most part, maybe a few times you get a thank you. You know, the right. stuff that you do. If you really in your children's life and you're doing stuff, my, see, my son takes my granddaughter to see his mother where she lives maybe 10 minutes away from me. He got to pass me to get to her, and he won't stop by here. And I do a lot for him. 
I ain't even going right. into no details about it. Right, right, right. But right, right. you understand what I'm saying? No, but right. I look at that and say, you know what? That's on him. That's why he's going to keep having a hard time because he ain't recognizing where his, who's his savior, who's his Christ. <laughs> he ain't recognizing that and being thankful for that. Right back now, Right by the house, he stopped. Right, you know, but, you know, they... When a problem jump up, hey, oh, the door handle broke. I get a phone call about that. Oh, you know that's coming. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, this, I mean, what are you telling me about the door handle? Fix it. No fixing. <laughs> that's, hey, that's my, what are you telling me that's, for? <laughs> that's my father, yeah. Akeem. Oh, she going to call you. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that's all I get. I would, they want to tell me the problems. They don't want to tell me no good news. Hey, I got a check for you. I got some money for you. I don't hear nothing like that. Right. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> no, he, he oh, just wanted no. to come. Just wanted to come from you, man. Right. right yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah he was like, oh yeah, I, I fix it. No, no, you broke it. You fix it. Uh-uh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm cutting back on them suckers. Hey, but you know what? Let me tell you, please. So, um, mm-hmm. with, as far as the lights is concerned, mm-hmm. just gotta take Say another again? step. As far as the license is concerned, uh, can take another mm-hmm. step back towards uh, uh, bringing paperwork down to the DMV. Yeah, you know what to do. That's why you're asking me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You take the same explanatory statements and turn that into the DMV. Now, of course, you got to change the wording from what wording? Yeah, yeah. ask for explanatory statements to the driver's license center and take it down there. And add that as part of the record. Now I can't give you details on you on your particular state because I'm not there, but that's basically what you do. Right, right. right. So what I'll do, I'll put it together and I change the word, uh-huh. and I'll take it right down there. And just now, and let me give you fair warning. Don't okay. email me or call me or text me talking about they won't take it. Oh no, I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> Don't even, because I can't tell you, I can't go make them take it. Or you got to sit back. They, you know, when I first went, uh, well, I didn't have an affidavit when I first did it. But when I first went, they took it. No problem. Oh, because I went in there with the full authority and expectation. Hey, add this as part of the record. Oh, we can't do that. I said, well, then how y'all record the birth certificate? Oh, we can't do this. And just like this can the birth certificate get in. I wanted us part of my record. Is, isn't that my right? Oh, let me talk to the supervisor. Supervisor said, okay. Hand it in. Boom. Done. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got you. I'm definitely going to yeah. do that. They got scanners. <laughs> they got to take, make copies of everything you give them. They don't keep your bill that you give them to show your address. They scan it. Right. They could do the same thing for that. Yeah. And then the, the last thing will mm-hmm. be that. Yeah, that's, the SS5 will be the last thing. So, well, Same well, process well, for that, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So what right, I do bro. is now just I'll deal with them tomorrow or whatever day I do with it, this week or next week. But I'll get it together and I'll take it down there. Hey, man. All right. appreciate you. Right. You've been a great right. help. Thank you. And you're going to be all right. All right. Okay. All right, All right brother. man. Thank you. When you come in this area, Keep though, man, when you coming in this area? But when you gonna come in this area? Where, where, you in this area? Where, you, where, where you at? Connecticut. Connecticut. Oh, I've been there already, man. I've been where? there a year ago. I haven't been back. Oh yeah. See, oh, yeah, yeah. See, I, yeah. See, I. Yeah. Well, see, I. I know you a year ago. This is what I tell <laughs> people that want to do something. You get the venue, I'll be there. Set it up. Okay. All right. Set it up. All right. Okay. okay. All right, brother. All right, peace, sir. All right. All right. Peace. All right, let's go to 503890. Peace. Peace. How peace. you doing, Akeem? What's going on, bro? I'm doing excellent. No, I'm doing good. Excelente. Yes. Oh, uh, oh, uh, good. Is, excellent. The, the Costa Rica is called Part of Vida. Part of Vida. What's that? Pro life, I think that means. Part of Vida? Part of Vida? Yeah. It's life, right? All right. 
Right, yeah. right. That is life. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. But, I got you know, a hat. I didn't I have a I bought a hat. I wear it. Huh? Well, you, go ahead. You bought a hat when you went on your uh, your vacation. You went on your vacation down yeah. there, didn't you, a while back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, um, yeah, I listened to the show, and uh, I didn't have a question until I was listening, and um, someone brought up you brought up no ex post facto, and that reminded me. Uh-huh. I, uh huh. I I got the traffic, the traffic ticket bundle, and I use that on a, a traffic ticket, is one of them camera tickets, or whatever. And uh, so uh-huh. I went to the went to the court, and the judge. <laughs> it's the part about the no ex post facto, and they had the definition of it and what it meant, and where was that in my uh-huh. constitution? And he said, "Well, if you use this, say you can win every case." I was like, "I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, babies, I'm not allowing this. <laughs> He's, I'm not allowing. This. I can't come like, but that's the point." Yeah, did you, and so I lost the case. You know, to that, that he's trying to take your arguments away. And first of all, he's acting like a lawyer. He ain't supposed to do that. <laughs> you know, mm. he's acting like a lawyer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I take it seriously. Yes, sir. Well, I, judge, he, he, he's not giving you due process. I didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that. Yeah, yeah I didn't have to read. I have to learn my procedures better. You know, and that's why I, mm-hmm. I was practicing too, so, so I can get better at mm-hmm. it. So I wasn't mad enough mm-hmm. that I lost anything. You know, I was prepared either way. You it, could have you know, like fulfilled. Did you my had that on the record? Did you? Yes. You can appeal yeah. that. No, he told me he said he told me he said you can appeal this if you want, and he said and I'll prepare. Uh, he'll, he'll give me something, prepare some document or whatever, or something that I needed right now if I was going to go ahead and um, and you know he was appreciative of the oh he loved the paperwork. He said this is very good paperwork, very clear and concise, and that was your bundle. Mm-hmm. And I just you know yeah. put in the information I needed. So this is very. I, said, I don't know where you got this from, but this is very nice. And he loved the Constitution because it was the original handwritten one. And he was right. loving it. He was working oh, all over. Like, oh, he said, where'd you get this? That's the Secretary of State. I feel like, wow, okay, great. <laughs> now, he was nice, you know. He was cool. He understood what I was trying to do. He said, this is one of the... I've seen a lot of stuff come through this court, but he actually gave you all credit, man. Gave you all props for that paperwork. Yeah. So you that, see, what you had was, that was a live case that you, you actually, those cases were real. Those mm-hmm. dumb bundles are coming from real cases. They're not coming off of just a draft or, you know, out of my head. They, there's actually ways I have four cases in it and got wins. Yeah, the actual fact of law, it, it, when that expo fact or retrospective laws clause in the Constitution shuts down every case. Even if they move by you in the case, which a lot of times they do, you go mm-hmm. to appeals, they're going to give you the win all the time. Because there's also, which I got to add to it, I got to, let me write this down. To even reinforce that, I'll show you. I'm going to show you. I'm going to just pull up a constitution. To reinforce that, um, that statement, constitution has another clause in it that reinforces that statement. And okay. let's go. It's in the Bill of Rights. Declaration of Rights for All. All right. I got to give me a second to scan through here. Um, Hopefully I can find it. I usually find these things when I'm just reading. (laughs) Um, All right. But in most constitutions, at the very end of the Bill of Rights or the Declaration of Rights, it'll say, this constitution is mandatory, not, um, there's a word for not, um, okay, right here, the provisions of the provisions of this constitution shall be taken, deemed, and construed to be mandatory and prohibitory and not merely directory except we're expressly made directly or permissory by its own terms. If you take that little section and most constitution has that and add it to the mm-hmm. ex post facto law, that reinforces that section. 
With that saying, that statement says mm-hmm. that whatever is in this Constitution is mandatory, and you must abide by it. Mm-hmm. And that's at the end of the Bill of Rights. And, it's and, and prohibitory. Huh? That, this is South Carolina, so I don't know what Constitution I... What state were you in? Uh, Oregon. Oregon, I had to look at this. But usually it's at the end of Bill of Rights or Declaration of Rights. After they give you all your rights, at the end of it, it has a statement like that. You take that and you reinforce it with that. He Like what mm-hmm. he said to you, he said, well, I ain't going to let you win this. You win everything. But then if you had that other statement in there to go with that, coupled with that, that would shut him down. He could he couldn't get around. He said, "Wait a minute, uh, Your Honor, that's uh, says it's, it's it's mandatory and prohibitory, meaning that you have to take this over whatever that statute says." You see? Okay. Yep. Oh, I'm writing that down as you're saying. Make you said Oregon. That. Yeah, that, that's a good one. Oregon. Oregon yeah, I believe eighteen eighteen fifty seven. I think that. The year. Oh wait, I, I got it right yeah. here. Let's copy this thing right here in the chair. This uh preamble article arrives. Uh, oh, dang it, I need the cover. Uh, this, this. I think it, I'm pretty sure it's 1857. What here we go? Here we go. Here it is. 1857. Yep, we're in Constitution. Yep. Mm-hmm. I'm just skimming through this Oregon one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got something similar in wording, and I don't know if it's the 18, but I just kind of pulled up a PDF of the Constitution, mm-hmm. and it says, um, let me go back to it. It says, The treatment of arrest the is foundation of the laws for punishment of crimes shall be found on these principles. Uh, excessive bail. I was just reading that thing and I moved trying to find something else. Okay, section 22 it says suspension of operation of laws. The operation of laws shall never be suspended except by authority of the legislative assembly. Meaning, what it's saying, the, the Constitution is law. So you can use that as to, to help you in that, but it doesn't. Not as strong as that other one. Look at number one. Is. Uh, see, if, see if there's a number thirty-three in that version you're using. You talking about the enumeration of rights? Yeah. Would that be the That's same? somewhat. That's somewhat mm-hmm. not quite as good as the other one. Mm-hmm. And sometimes if you go into the legislative part, you'll find that statement as well. Okay. So it may not be in this section, but if you go to the legislation start, uh it'll it'll have a statement like that. All okay. right. Check that legislation. Okay. All Thanks right. a lot. I appreciate All it. Right. All right, man. All right, Pete. Alrighty. Time is it eight thirty eight? All right, I'm getting off early tonight because I'm I'm kind of mentally worn out from reading all day and doing other stuff. Uh, today was call auction day, so I was you spent a few hours doing that. But I'll see y'all next week. Uh, I think my son is doing his show on Saturday mornings at ten ten. Um, I think it's ten a.m. Oh, 10 or 11. But I'll see y'all next Tuesday.